a childhood favorite. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> that just happened. Sharks, my name's Tyler Hadzicki. My company is Low Racing Trikes, and I'm here today seeking 120,000 in exchange for 20% of my company. I've been wanting to spin to the tank like that for a long time. That's the kind of excitement you get when you ride one of my trikes. It's like a race car and a tricycle had a love child. With three wheels, not only do you get stability and speed, but incredible agility as well. The rear wheels are casters that can be controlled manually with this handle to take tight corners, drift, and even spin 360 degrees. Sharks, this is not just an adult tricycle. This is an experience unlike anything else out there. I'm ready to take this to the world. Everyone wants to come along for this crazy ride. I gotta try it. Is there any certain age for it? What are you saying, Lori? It's young and hard. I have two more back here. Oh, come on, Mark. I'll race you. Kevin, join us. You have one big enough for Mark? Of course, these are fully adjustable. I got a big ass head. It still don't fit. <laughs> <laughs> You're so low, you feel like you're going a million miles an hour. Low racing trikes. Right. Did you create this yourself? So this started off a long time ago as a sixth grade science project. The teacher hated the idea because it wasn't scientific enough, but then when I won first place at the San Diego Science Fair, I guess she had to eat it. <laughs> what happened after you won the award? Well, I have the first picture of the original tricycle here. And what I did was I went to the swap meet and I was cutting up trikes. <laughs> ah, that's oh, awesome. Oh. So that's prototype one. That's prototype one, that one a science fair. You've improved it a lot. How long did it take to go from there to this? About four years. Are you in college? I'm a sophomore in college. Now you try to bring it to market. Kickstarter, a crowdfunding and platform. What was your target? My target was $15,000, raised $46,000. So 300% of my goal, which was pretty cool. There was 130 orders. I produced those all at my facility. I got those shipped out over that year. Where's your facility? We went to Mexico and set up a facility there with someone who's been building DMX bikes for a while. So I'm an international businessman under the age of 18 with three patents <laughs> out of <laughs> high school. You. And what did you charge per unit? What was your cost? These are $350. Um, cost on these is about 170, 180 to make it. These are pretty much handmade. What I don't like is I don't like making a whole bunch of these because I you hand test every single one of them. I go down to Mexico, I have to spend, you know, eight hours a day testing a batch of 40. That's how I do them. Oh, so Ride you didn't them have all, an inspector. pack them all, make sure this paint's powder coated correctly. I don't want any bad products going to the customer because it reflects poorly on me. How are you going to sell 10,000 of these? I can rent the larger facility, then I can hire the labor. There are facilities in Mexico and in Asia that make millions of bikes. Why wouldn't you simply go to one of them and say, look, I want to get 10,000 of these made by you? Well, an easy thing, though, is just you can hire an inspector. There are several very credible right, services, right, right, like definitely. Euro Veritas, where they can go down, have a protocol, and they can't ship yeah. until those are checked no, and definitely, the inspection's definitely. done. No, all, these, the man all these things are coming in place, the but I, need, I want to test every single one of them. You don't want to let that go. You want to be personally responsible for each and every bike. That's almost impossible. But it's a niche, pr it's a niche product that. at this then point that I'm able price to. Then you got to raise your price significantly. Tyler, let me ask right. you this. L let me understand a little bit about who buys these. It's usually parents for their kids, which are like, you know, 9 to 16, around there. And then also it's the adult guy, kind of. Robert. I think you're a, a terrific kid. Oh, man, I should say. I yeah, love your product. But I don't see uh, this as investable. It's very early in the game. I think you have a long way to go before you get an investment. I'm out. Thank you very much for your consideration, Barbara. Hey, look, Tyler, I, I don't see this as an investment for me because I don't know how I turn this into a huge business. I'm not sure you know yet, but I'm out. Thank you, Kevin, for your consideration. Tyler, you 
you are a great example of an entrepreneur. One of the things I find very admirable is that you wanted to make sure that everything was perfect. On the flip side of that, though, you're one person. You can't go and stand in the factory and watch 40 made at a time. I personally see it as a licensing deal because I do think to scale, you're going to need a big company right. that can do exactly that. I think that's a bit of a ways away. And for that reason, I'm out. Thank you, Lori. Tyler, incredibly impressive for anybody at any age, at your age, doubly impressive where you've got. No one doubts you. I doubt what the market is. If it's a tricycle, you've got to change the design. It's too hardcore for general distribution for kids to use. If it's niche for hardcore people like me that love speed or older kids, it's too cheap. I don't know how big that market but is. But I Maybe. think there's loads of toys in this space that are the kid-friendly, ride it in your, your driveway kind of thing. I, and I think it fits there. You're obviously a brilliant guy. You're going to invent something else. I just don't know where this one fits or how I can help you. I'm sorry, I don't. Thank you, Robert. What's your next product, Tyler? My next product? The reason I asked about what's next mm -hmm. is this, I don't see this as, you know, selling yeah. like 2 million units. Definitely. Right? So if I'm investing in your company, there's got to be something next because I want to make the investment so we can get someplace else together, someplace bigger and, and better. So I think there's lots of stuff that you can do with, you know, add-ons, all that customization kinds of things. Those will increase your business on the margin. That's not going to take you to a $25 million company. I mean, the scooter sells 7 million units in one year, one year. But that, that applies to everybody, and it gets you from point A to point B, and it's fun. Tyler, look, I think it's brilliant, but I, I have to see a vision from you, right, that takes it so it can be a much bigger company. But um, right now, I don't see it, Tyler, so for those reasons, I'm out. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you, brilliant guys. Brilliant idea, yeah. though. Thank you. I'm going to sell a lot on my website and to the big box, so that's we fine. We hope you do. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm a little bummed that they couldn't see my vision. I don't think that it's a toy. And the fact that they wouldn't even consider or listen to what I had to say about the market was just rude, almost. Just rude. <laughs>